Chapter 23, One Last Try By 1799, Ona and Jack Staines and their baby, Eliza, appear to have been living as happily as possible in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Always poor and always working, they manage to find a way to pursue life, liberty, and happiness. At the same time, George and Martha still had not gotten over the fact that they had been unable to capture Ona Judge. Now the retired gentleman farmer at Mount Vernon that he had always wanted to be, George Washington, perhaps with a nudge from Martha, rekindled his mission of getting Ona to return to Mount Vernon, where he was certain that she belonged. The person George chose to carry out this job was Martha's nephew, Burwell Bassett, Jr. Burwell was 35 years old, nine years older than Ona. He had known Ona as a child from his visits to Mount Vernon. Now he was a member of the Virginia Senate. George thought this would give Burwell an excuse to travel to New Hampshire and tell people he was there for business. George instructed Burwell to meet with John Langdon after arriving in New Hampshire. It had not occurred to George that John would no longer be his ally in his quest to retake Ona. But times had continued to change, and George still had not fully taken into account how much attitudes towards slavery were shifting, particularly with politicians such as John. For example, for example, John had officially switched political parties, moving from the Federalist, which was George Washington's party, to the Democratic Republicans, the political party headed at the time by Thomas Jefferson. George ignored this. It seemed that he was only the only person unable to get over the past. Ona had been gone for almost three years, yet he was determined to get her back. He was certain that John Langdon would support him in this venture, and he insisted on continuing his absurd claim that Ona had been enticed away by a Frenchman. In the same stubborn spirit, he also maintained his position that he would not allow Ona to negotiate for her own freedom, writing that it would set a, quote, dangerous precedent. Burwell Bassett set out for New Hampshire and did indeed stay with the Langdons during his time in Portsmouth. Burwell discovered that not only had John Langdon switched political parties, but he had publicly expressed reservations about including slavery in the U.S. Constitution. All the Langdon family slaves had been freed and then rehired as paid laborers. Despite all of this, Burwell could not believe that John Langdon would not help him and his uncle George in their effort to capture Ona. After all, Burwell reasoned, John did not refer to himself as a leader in the anti-slavery movement. When Burwell arrived in Portsmouth, he must have assumed it would be a relatively easy day's work to grab Ona, put her on a ship, and sail back to Virginia. After all, he knew exactly where she was. Burwell went to Ona's house shortly after his arrival. We can imagine this moment. Ona, now about 26, hears a knock on the door. Baby Eliza, now about one year old, would be close by her, toddling around on unsteady legs. Jack Staines was away at sea. Ona was used to Jack's travel schedule and was just happy contemplated, contemplating the day when he was scheduled to return. The knock on the door could have been anyone, a free black friend, a white friend, someone who wanted Ona to watch the child while they left to do an errand. So Ona opens the door. And then, instead of a friend, she sees her nightmares come to life. Standing in front of her is the man she recognizes from her youth. George and Martha have not given up they are still after her. Fear clenches her heart. Instinctively, she picks up Eliza and closes, holds her close as she faces Burwell Bassett Jr. for the first time in years. How she wishes now that she hadn't opened the door. Burwell follows the script that George suggested to him before he left Mount Vernon. If Ona voluntarily returns to Virginia, she will not face any punishment for her misdeeds. Burwell does his best not to speak too harshly to her. but it would be better and more truthful if he did because Burwell has every intention of treating Ona and her daughter roughly if he has to. Will you come with me, he may have said, as pol politely as he could. Ona stares at him, her little girl's warm body fueling her courage. After what probably seems like a very long time, Ona answers Burwell very simply, no. As a native southerner, Burwell would have been offended to his core that he had to negotiate with this woman, this slave. Yet it becomes clear quickly that Ona is not going to budge. 
Burr Wells swallows his anger and sweetens the deal, promising that the Washingtons would set her free when she arrived at Mount Vernon. Ona knows this is a lie, but she stands there and listens. Perhaps Burwell continues with promises for an easy, non-dramatic return to the estate, maybe even reminding Ona of her family still living at Mount Vernon, or how Martha is still just plain devastated at Ona's loss, because there's no one who is as wonderful as her best slave. Ona is missed. Ona is needed. Maybe Burwell looks around at that moment and delivers his strongest argument. If she goes with him, Ona and Eliza will not have to live in poverty in New Hampshire. As Burwell prattles on, Ona finds her resolve. When he finally finishes speaking, she looks him straight in the eyes. Her response is final and fierce. I am free now and choose to remain so.